So in this problem, we know what the uh, we know what the applied clamping force is. We know how much hydraulic pressure is pushing the chuck jaws together, and uh, and we know the mass of the chuck jaws, and we know the spindle speed. So we know the rotational velocity here, and and what we're trying to understand is what is the apparent clamping force, because at some point the cutting force is going to be applied to the workpiece here. And, and for the sake of the problem, we're going to assume that all of the cutting force is trying to move the workpiece in the fixture. So it's either trying to, to make it stop rotating while the chuck continues to rotate, or if we're pushing in this direction, if we're doing an outside turning operation, it's trying to push the workpiece back into the chuck. And so that's the worst case scenario. So that's what we're going to uh, do the math for here. So we have an applied clamping force from the hydraulic pressure. As soon as the spindle starts to spin, each of the jaws are going to be pulled away from the center with centripetal acceleration. And so we need to figure out what's the, what's the centripetal acceleration here times the mass of the jaws because force equals mass times acceleration. So we know the, if we know the force of the jaws pulling apart caused by that acceleration, we know the clamping force in caused by the hydraulic pressure, you can take that uh, clamping, so force clamping minus force acceleration equals force applied. So what you need to do is figure out how much force is from the centripetal acceleration, subtract that from the clamping force, and that will tell you how much effective clamping force you have. If you know the effective clamping force and you know the friction coefficient, then you can figure out how much cutting force could you possibly apply before the, the, the workpiece moves in the spindle.